Hey, while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Give me Isaiah 1 and 3. 3. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, a strong animal, and the ass his master's crib. Hard working animal. Uh -huh. These animals know who their master are, they know where their home is. Three. But Israel, who? But Israel does not know. These animals have a a one up. This dumb animal, this strong animal, this hard working animal, they have something up on the children of Israel. What is it? My people do not consider. They don't consider where their home is. They don't consider who their master is. We don't know who God is. If I ask you your nationality today, before I walked in here today, what would you say your nationality is? What people do you pursue from? What's your nationality? You. You black, African American, Jamaican. Indian. That's what you were saying? You were saying black? Black American? How about you? Black American? How about you? Black American? Everybody would say that they're Black American or Puerto Rican or Hispanic? Black American? How about you, brother? What would you say your nationality is? Or you? What would you say your nationality is? Puerto Rican? Because you know the Lord is not the author of confusion. He said, you are my children, and I'm going to make it evidently plain, regardless of everything you've been told. The children of Israel don't even consider. Today, we didn't even consider we the Jews. We didn't consider that we the children of Israel. But by the curses, give me Deuteronomy 28 and 46. But by these curses, you're going to know who you are. All right, read. This is the book of Deuter Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 46. And there shall be a 45. 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee. The curses are the bad things that happened so far. We talked about Tulsa, Oklahoma. We talked about slavery, right? We talked about a few different things that happened to the children of Israel. We look back in history and we can say that happened to us as a people, right? He said that those curses would do what? Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee. Uh-huh. And shall pursue thee. Pursue thee. And overtake thee. You ain't gonna be able to get away from it. You can you can live in a city or in the field. You can live in this country or the next country. He said it. But I got for you. You ain't gonna be able to outrun it. You can die and come back, and you got come back to your kids, and have your kids continue to regenerate. They're not gonna escape either. He said. Read. Till thou be destroyed. Till we be destroyed. Are we destroyed today as a people? We destroyed by a lack of knowledge. A lack of knowledge of how to serve our God. The Bible attests to it. We are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. We know how to get money, right? We know how to make different things and allow it to be profitable and influence brothers and sisters. We know how to do them different things. We know math, but we destroyed in our lack of knowledge on how to serve them. He said he want us death destroyed. He want us so destroyed that we worship each other, that we worship paper, that we worship items, that we worship nothing. That's what he wanted. Why? Read. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Because we said we didn't want to listen to God. He was like, all right, hell I know, yo. I see you back. But you're going to get some bumps and bruises and stars and burn marks. And I accept you back. But you're going to go through some things. Slavery was one of them things we went through because we said we didn't want to listen to God. Read. To keep his commandments. That's all we got to do is keep his commandments. He said, thou shalt not, you better not. He said, thou shalt, you better. That's all, he, that's, all, that's all it is. It's easy. The Lord said, do not as a man shave off your beard. That's an easy, my brother got a very long beard over there. That's a very easy thing to do. The Lord said, do not dress as the opposite sex. He said, don't cross dress. That's very easy to do. I can get up in the morning and just put my pants on and be a man. 
and just do what I have to do as a man. Why do I have to play, dress up, and put on a woman's dress and behave as the opposite sex? He said, that's confusing. He said, just keep my commandments. That's all, Greek. And his statutes, uh, which are sub laws, because you got the Ten Commandments, but underneath those Ten Commandments, if you read further in the Bible, there's sub laws that go underneath each of those Ten Commandments. Read. Which he commanded. Uh huh. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. Those curses are going to be upon us for a sign. Um, is that a smooth machine or a drink machine right there? Mm -hmm. I see red. I can't see the names. I'm not even the but I see that's tea, that's juice. How do you know which drink to drink according to your taste? You, you can tell what, which drink is which by what? The sign. The sign. You know what you're getting by the sign. The Lord said these curses were going to be on the children of Israel as a sign or an indicator to prove who you are. Give me a um, whole that. Read Revelation 2 and 9. Because there's a misperception today, there's deception today that the people who are in the land called Israel who say that they're Jews, they're not really Jews. Read. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 9. Uh -huh. I know thy works and tribulations. The, he know how the, the, the hell we've been through. The Lord said, I know that. I know your works. I know what you've tried. And you turned your back. Yeah, I know all this. I know the hardships you went through. He said, I know this. Go ahead. And poverty. And poverty. We are in the, in, an impoverished people. We, we rely on the nations for everything, right? You know our poverty, Read. But thou art rich. But we are rich. Why? Because the kingdom of God belongs unto us. The kingdom of heaven belongs to us, Read. And I know the blasphemy of them. The which, blasphemy or the lies. Of who? Of them which say they are Jews and are not. Which what? Which say they are Jews and are not. Before the day, you didn't say you was a Jew. No, I didn't say I should who, Who's saying they Jews today but are not, according to the Lord? The Lord said, I know the blasphemy or the lies of the people who say that they are Jews. There's people walking on the earth playing Christian. There's people walking on the earth playing Jew. He said, I know that. I know those lies. You look at the land of Israel, the curse of slavery is not a sign to show them that they are the children of Israel. The children of Israel today will be away from their homeland and will need a savior to come to bring them back to their homeland. They didn't have a savior to come bring them back to their homeland. We still waiting on our savior. We still in power. We still waiting. Why we wait? Because we are not hearkening to the commandments yet. Right now, we're just starting to learn. Remember about the valley of the dry bones. What you see before you is the awakening of the nation of Israel. Us coming out and teaching our brothers and sisters. Wake up. Keep the commandments of God, our Lord coming. When we come, it's going to be an ugly sight if you're not keeping his commandments. Right? Waking up. Right now is the time to wake up. Keep the commandments so that when he comes, he said that he got the water. We already got a head start. Running head start. Okay, he already wanted like this. He wanted like that. I'm gonna make sure he's straight. So that when he see me, he can see I'm trying my best. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 2 and verse 9. Read. I know thy works and tribulations and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. But what are they? But are the synagogue of Satan. Woo! The church or the house of Satan. Ooh. That's not us. Today, before today, we wasn't claiming we were Jews. The Lord said those who claim that they're Jews and are not, they're the house of Satan. Who is Satan? How does he operate? He operates in hatred and deceit. Be careful that no man deceives you. His whole operation is to trick you, to keep you in that trick bag so that you can wear pants as a woman in church. Because that's your defense. Your defense is to keep the commandment. Once you're not keeping the commandments, your defense down, Satan can run all over you. Let's go and read Deuteronomy 28. This, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 46. Uh -huh. and, there and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder 
and upon thy seed forever. Forever for our children forever. Remember the last curse we was reading about the fruit of our bodies and children. Our children being affected with these curses. So our decisions as parents truly affects our children. Even our children that we don't see. We are the result of our parents who made the poor decision to say little figure to the Lord. To do whatever they could do to turn their back on the Lord and have the Lord say, I am turning up back on you. We the result of that. So now we gotta turn the tide. We have to like, it's probably state, we have to break the cycle. And in breaking the cycle, it causes for us to repent. Repent and come back to the Lord. Give me, uh, I think it's 32. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, mm -hmm. and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there, and there shall be no might in their hand. So, go back to that. Um, who knows what this is referring to? This was a prophet. This was history. This is spoken way back in the day from Moses, all right? During the time he spoke, it had happened yet. So it's a prophecy as it's written. But when we look back on history, we say that happened to somebody. That's a curse that happened to a group of people. What, what is that referring to? It says, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Did that ever happen in history for us? Was our sons and daughters given unto another people? Yeah, absolutely. During his time, when it's time for slavery, the curses apply to our, to our people. Uh, go back to the slide. Yeah. To another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longer for them all the long. We they caught us off the coast of Africa, the west of Africa, right? Some of us was already here. Some of us was here. Some of us was in Africa. Wherever they took us from, be it here or Africa, what power did we have to say stop? What power did we have to go after and retrieve our children? The Bible eloquently depicted that we wouldn't have any power. All we could do was just watch and cry. Anybody seen the movie Roots? Yeah. Did we see that in Roots? Did we see that? Was what is a slave? Yeah. Anybody seen 12 Years a Slave? Did we see that in 12 Years a Slave depicted? Children being taken and parents, all they could do was just watch and cry. Yes, that was depicted. That's known history that happened to our people. That's the curse to identify you as the children of Israel. Read. The fruit of thy land. <coughs> Hold on. It said, thine eyes shall look oh, with, and fail with longing for them all the day long. There should be no might in thy hand. There's no political might. We didn't have anybody to come speak for us in the capacity of an ambassador from one country to the next. I declare that you release those that you have taken from me or else suffer the consequences. We didn't have that. We didn't have a military to stand behind that man and make good on his words. We didn't have it. We didn't have a military might. We didn't have a political might. We didn't have a financial might to finance trips over to the Americas, to finance warriors so that they go and grab our people back. We didn't have that. We all said we would be completely destroyed and broken. Thy, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Give me 68. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there shall be, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond woman, and no man shall buy you. That said a whole lot. First and foremost, we gonna start with this. It says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt uh, again. What is that referring to? What is it? We are in Exodus twenty. I want you to open up your pamphlet. And on that back page that you that you open it up to, open it up to the back page. You're gonna see a dollar bill. What's on that dollar bill? 
What do we see on the dummy? We see a pyramid. What, what do we learn about pyramids from in history? My brother, what do we learn about pyramids from? Pyramids were where? Egypt. Egypt, absolutely. Egypt. The Lord said he's going to bring you into Egypt again, right? Well, let's read what Egypt did. Read. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 2. Uh-huh. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Another word for bondage is captivity, right? Bondage, captivity, or slavery. The children of Israel in Egypt, when you do your reading, they were slaves in the land of Egypt. Egypt is a house of bondage. Strange. Today, America would be considered Egypt, right? They got references of Egypt. They got the pyramid. If you see the obelisk, that's a monument structure native to Egypt, the land, right? We have places called Memphis, right? That's a, a word that harkens back unto Egypt itself. Right? So a lot of different places and a lot of different symbolism they use to describe this land as being the spiritual counterpart to the original Egypt. We understood that the children of Israel served slavery in Egypt. What did the children of Israel do in today's Egypt? Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. And how did they get to Egypt? Read it. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. Uh huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Into the house of bondage. How? Again. Again. When the Lord's going to make you come into slavery again. Right? How? With ships. How do we get into America? With ships. We came here by way of cargo slave ship. Cargo slave ship. The ships were designed to carry different types of merchandise, potatoes, whatever. It wasn't designed to carry men. But they converted it, use, and put us or our forefathers in the holes of those ships and carried us into what the Lord called Egypt. Check it out. Look at the holes of the ship. Look how we are crammed up in the ship. Yeah. You can go back to that first one that you had it on. I like that. But if you hear, you hear. We're going to rock what we got. So in the ship, we got our brothers huddled up. This is just a depiction of the actuality what our forefathers faced. We got barrels of liquid, and then we got our forefathers on top. We got a, a diagram here, if you can go to the next slide so you can see the diagram bigger. The diagram of our people lined up shoulder to shoulder. And if you can look closer, their legs are chained one to another. That would discourage them from running away. Right? Just imagine it, a few months laying on the ship, up and down, morning sickness or sea sickness. There's no getting up and going to the bathroom. There is no bathroom. You're going to the bathroom, they have their monthlies, right? They're having birth. They have it, they're getting sick, they got diarrhea, they vomiting on each other. Right? This was a hazardous condition. And a lot of our people didn't survive. It. It's just the truth. But now it was with those who actually did survive. Right? We hit a day. This was a horrendous condition that the Lord depicted what happened to the children of Israel if they didn't listen to the Lord our God. Let's go back and read. And the Lord, sh <clears throat> this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Right. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So the way we came into Egypt by way of ships, never happened again. I've seen that happen to anybody else. You won't see it again. It's only a sign to the children of Israel, you, me, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. That's our sign to show us we are the children of Israel. In the 1400s, Christopher Columbus came over here to prove that they found the 10 tribes of Israel. They brought our brothers that was here back to the Queen in England or Spain. Right? So they went back and forth on the ships as well from here to the other land. Look at that. We don't have to wait. The northern kingdom of slavery. That'll be your uh, so-called Hispanics. That'll be the northern kingdom of Israel. The ten tribes. If you check it out, look at our people serving bondage. They went into bondage before you went out of here. Keep reading. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. And when we got off those ships, 
we were sold to our enemies. That's our history. But the Lord prophesied it to happen. Valuable gang of young Negroes, this is an ad by Josh A. Beard, will be sold at auction on Wednesday the 25th at 12 o'clock at Banks Arcade. 17 valuable young Negroes, men and women, field hands, sold for no fault, meaning they was in the best condition, right? If you look at them, they're giving them a thorough check, right? And they proving if that advertisement was true or not. Seeing his body structure, you know, seeing he, if he got a crooked spine or if one of his legs longer than the other, if he's strong, they even look at his mouth and inspect him. They do that today in the NBA drive. They do that in the NFL drive today, still. The owners, the slave owners or the league owners, still inspect the product to make sure that they get a good deal. These, by all means, are rich and paid slaves, but they're slaves nonetheless. They can't open their mouth and speak the way I'm speaking. If they do, there's going to be consequences and repercussions behind them. Right? They are blackballed. Never allowed them to throw a football in the Right? So, this thing is true. These things are signs said to happen to the children of Israel. Uh, let's keep reading. And there. Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Sold unto our enemies. Who bought us? The people that look like me and you bought us? Through history, it didn't say that. Through history, it said when we got off those boats, we were sold to Master Charles and Virginia. We were sold to people who changed our last name. My last name used to be Jordan. And I changed it once I found out who I truly was. It's an Israel. I'm an Israelite. I changed my name to Israel, God's people, right? So did um so did uh let me get let me get together because okay, I don't get it from that's okay. You know. Did our people sell us to the white man? No. Give me um Exodus 11. No. All, listen, all black people aren't the same family. You got a, um, no, not. you got a, um, Zonovan, anybody got a Zonovan? For him? So, if you could pull it up on your phone, it would be perfect. You can read the definition of him. But all, listen, all Oriental people aren't the same. All white people aren't the same. You got your Italians, you got your Irish, you got different families of white people, just like you got different families of blacks. Yeah, white slaves also, right? Absolutely. But the ones that were in Africa that was rounding us up and selling us, they are from the family of Ham. We are from the family of Shem. Right? That's a difference. Uh, read that. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 11 and verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Egyptians and Israel. It looks so much alike. Everything from the way they talk. Listen, we were in captivity with them for over 400 years. We built a pyramid. We learned that way. Right? We act like, just like today, we act like the counterpart to the men who had us in captivity. We act like we talk like we speak like we We even think like we Right? But he said there's a difference between us and the Egyptians, or us and those other dark nations. There's a difference. Okay, read that. We're going to also read what the scholars wrote about the children of Ham and the children of Shem, which relates to the so-called Negroes and the so-called African race. That there's a difference. Read. Negroes. This From is the this. From the Zonovan's Compact Diction, Bible Dictionary. Uh -huh. Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood. You remember Noah. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. We're talking about that lineage. Read. And one of eight persons to live through the flood. Eight people lived through the flood. Noah, his wife, his three sons, and his three sons' wives. That's eight people. Read. He became the progenitor of the dark races. So who became the progenitor? Ham became, Ham. Ham became the father of all the dark races. Three. 
Not the Negro. But not the Negro. Ham isn't our father. He didn't become the progenitor or the forefather of us, the Negroes. But what? But the Egyptians. He's the father of the Egyptians. Ethiopians. Ethiopians. Libyans. Uh huh. And Canaanites. All dark nations. He's the father of them. Those, if he was listening, are the ones who actually sold us into captivity. Uh, let's go back and continue reading where we were at. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. So, 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 if you think about the Israelis that's in the land of Israel now, where in history can we point to and say they went into slavery on slave ships? They have, a, they have a teacher out of that? Have y'all ever learned that in history, in school? Because they've taken out a lot of history now based off the simple fact that we're connecting the dots on what they taught us as it relates to the Bible and our slavery. They, they're removing a lot of that. But I don't ever recall seeing the Jews taken into captivity on slave ships. That's another clue and exciting to show you that those aren't the people of God. He said, out of his book, these curses are going to identify the children of Israel. Keep reading. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. We were sold unto who the Lord said is our enemies. It's good for us to know who is in opposition to us. Pookie and Ray Ray ain't my enemies. We might be at odds. We might be having a difference of opinion. Pookie and Ray Ray my brother. This man who did this to us, he will never have our best interests at all. I could gain Pookie and Ray one day. I could make them, you know, my compadres one day. Or compadres. But an enemy, an enemy does this. Nine or seven, twelves. Mocking the apostleship of Jesus Christ. Smashing babies against the wall. We don't do that. That's not how we built. That's not how we designed. We got a little more compassion than what the conquistadors came over here and did. He's down here stoking the fire, roasting these men and women as they hang by their neck. He's roasting the turkeys. That's what the turkey symbolizes. More. If they didn't bring back enough product, guess what they would do? They would chop off their hands. We see that happen here, it also happened in the Congo. More atrocities. An enemy would do this. Keep reading. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies what? for bond men. For what? For bond men. Slave men. And bond women. And slave women. And no man shall buy you. No man shall buy you. What does that mean? You're going to be sold, but nobody's going to buy you. What does that mean? We would definitely be sold. Men definitely bought us. So does that make that statement true? The statement was, no man should buy you. Is there a contradiction in the Bible? You're going to be sold, but ain't nobody going to buy you. Is that a contradiction? I want you to think about it. It's not a contradiction of Scripture. It's that our understanding of the Scripture was never taught to us. Buy you actually means redeem. This is what's going into buy. This is what it means to buy. Remember earlier I stated that the parameters of slavery as it's outlined in the Bible is actually going into servitude as if you are an employer and you're employing employees. That's what this is going into. This ain't going to be the type of slavery that you used to, the Lord said. This ain't going to be the type of servitude that you remember. This is what it means to buy. Read. 25, 47. 47. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 25 and verse 47. And if a sojourner or stranger wax rich by thee, and thy brother that dwelleth by him wax poor. So somebody of another nation, right? They got the money, they start to become rich, and they live close to you. And your brother of your same nation becomes poor, what happens? And sell himself unto the stranger. He's in debt, and so now he's sold his services unto the stranger. Read. Or sojourner by thee, uh -huh. or to the stock of the stranger's family. Or he was passed on from one, uh, one father to the son of the stranger, right? This man was an inheritance to this stranger, read. 
Verse 48. After that, he is sold, he made. After that, he is sold, he may be redeemed again. He may be redeemed. Read. One of his brethren may redeem him. One of his brethren may redeem him. So that's what we was used to. We was used to, oh man, we, somebody gonna buy us, somebody gonna sell us, that's cool. Somebody gonna get me out of it, who's my brother? He said, no, you're gonna be slave men and slave women and nobody's gonna be able to redeem you. Nobody's gonna be able to buy you out of that debt that you're in. You're gonna be serving captivity for a very long time. Nobody's gonna save you. There's gonna be no might, financial might, no, no political might, there's going to be no thing that you can do to get your people out of this situation of slavery. Listen, we try, even with Stokely Carmichael, with Malcolm X, with uh, Marcus Garvey, we tried during the Civil Rights era to get people to buy out of the idea that we live. No man can do that. Nobody can change the perception of us. All we can do is understand that that perception of us is out there and live according to the word of the Lord. The Lord said, the kingdom of heaven is within you. You want to bring forth the kingdom of heaven? I already gave it to you. You just got to move different. You got to act different. You got to obey me, the Lord said. All of this sitting around waiting for a man to pull us out of the hell that we in, it's not going to happen. No man shall buy you. No man shall redeem you. Christ can that's what he died for. Give me that in Luke 1. Luke 1 and 16. That was the whole purpose of God. We didn't, they were instrumental in allowing us to speak and enjoy some sort of the freedoms that we enjoy today or some sort of privileges that we enjoy today. But they just small privileges. I commend them for what they did for the spirit that the Lord put on them so that we have certain rights and acknowledge in a certain light and that laws are are enacted because of them, but that's not the end of We still fight. We gotta bring God into this fight. Read. This is the book of Luke, chapter one and verse 68. Read. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed, and what? And redeemed. Redeemed, that word again, redeemed. Bought back, bought from captivity. Who? His people. His people. He has redeemed his people. Read. And hath raised up a horn of salvation. A horn, from a horn of safety. Or a horn, a horn of saving or a king of saving. Read. For us in the house of his servant, David. Right. It's in the house of servant, his servant, David. So we're going to um, finish up Deuteronomy 2868 and then take some questions. If y'all have any questions, it's about time to wrap up. Uh, finish that up. So no man shall buy us. We understand that they're happening, right? More on those enemies. Give me 47, 47, 48. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 47. Uh -huh. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, and for, and for the abundance of all things. We had it all. We didn't want for nothing. We wasn't worried about anything. We had safety. We had protection. We had our own land. All we had to do was tie the way he told us to tie. All we had to do was not kill our brother. All we had to do was not whore out our sin. All we had to do was marry our woman, right? Following his law. That's all we had to do. He said, since you didn't enjoy the abundance that I gave you, what's going to happen? Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies. Thy who? Thy enemies. You're going to serve a people that think that you're a retired farmer. You want to spend time with your family? You gotta get permission to not go to work. We had services set up where everything around the clock was. Everything that you see done today it wasn't done off the reward of getting money. It was done off the fear of God. We had everything set up. Our elderly, our sick was taken care of. Our widows was taken care of. All we had to do was look out for them, give to um, the church. And the church took care of the specific needs. We didn't like that system. We started being selfish. We started being stingy. We wanted to look out and see what everyone else in the other nations was doing and say, I want to live like them. And the Lord said, okay, you're going to live like them. But live like them, you're going to get the bottom. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. So what people serve their enemies today? 
meaning you got to go to work for the things you need. You have to work for a nation that don't have your best interests at heart. You my brother. Do I work for you? Can I work for you? Do you have facilities and, and, and resources where your people can come to you and get work from? No. Coca-Cola. You got a thirst, right? You're going to read that right here. Read it. Which the Lord, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. In hunger. I jumped the gun, but in hunger. I like Popeye's chicken. I like sometimes McDonald's, but I got to stop eating that because that's a joke. Right? But these different establishments are established by people that don't look like you and us. And we frequent these places often. The Lord said you have to serve them for the walk of hunger. Look at this. Snap food assistance. The people that provide those assistance. Don't look like you and I. Uh, read. And in thirst. And in thirst. Water. Coke. Coca-Cola used to be good. I stopped drinking it. They ain't no good. Water. The sun. Or spring water. I like spring water. Right? Or if you can't afford to go buy your 28 pack of ice mountain, go to your faucet. You got to pay somebody for that water. I'm not paying my people for that water. The Lord says, your enemies will have control of these resources. You have to now serve them. The way you serve them to get those things is work a job. You work your job, give them the money to attain the things you want. And this was freely given to us. And their excuse for charging you for this is the fact that the water needs to be clean. They poisoned the water. The water was poisoned. Keep reading. And in nakedness. Uh huh. And in want of all things. Uh huh. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So, whatever we want medication, uh, social security card, birth certificate, death certificate, our knowledge. Our knowledge on how to serve the Lord. All that was given to us, we had to serve an enemy for it. Read. Until he had destroyed thee. Until he had destroyed thee. Now we are destroyed. The yokes of iron was removed from our necks. We are not destroyed by what we call ourselves after the names of the people who enslaved us. That's destruction. That's being destroyed. We think Christ is a white man. That's destruction. Right? We believe that Christ came for all people when it just stated in Luke 1 that he died for his people in the house of David. Right? Um, was that it? So what I came to teach today is to get you to think about the things you were taught. How truly do they line up with the scriptures? Who the children of Israel are and how of what we must do to get back in God's good graces. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models.